Hola, hola, my name is Ramon, cosmetic chemist, esthetician, resident of Germany. I've been living in Germany now since July, 2022. Being in Europe, I am very privileged to have access to very specific kinds of skincare. And I love going to the drugstores and local apotheques here to see what they have to offer. So today we're gonna to be talking about products for face and body that I purchased here at German drugstores. We're exploring some international brands. So here I have my bag of goodies. Just to preface, everything in this bag is purchased myself. Nothing is PR, it's because German brands don't know who I am. And none of these are sunscreens just because I've tried so many European sunscreens living in the UK. Also, I've had minorly bad luck prior when I've tried to buy German sunscreens. So nothing in this bag of sunscreen is like purely skincare. So getting into it, first product category is body care. Here I find body care is a little bit different than I see in the US in terms of ingredient focus, but also how they promote it. And I feel like here I see a lot more focus on specific ingredients and the benefits that they do for body care here, as opposed to in the US, it's just generally like, this is a lotion that gives you these things. Here, they really advertise ingredients first and foremost. First ones we're gonna talk about is from a brand called Mixa. This is available at a few different types of stores. I bought this at a place called Rossman here. So this one is their Panthenol Comfort. This is a body lotion and I mean, all of it's in German. So this talks about how it has 10% uh, of glycerin and Panthenol. When I first saw that, it says 10% and then Panthenol right next to it. And I'm like, oh my God, it has 10% Panthenol. That is crazy. It does not have 10% Panthenol. So that was a lie because glycerin is the second ingredient on this ingredients list, but then Panthenol is not, I mean, it's, it's down the list. This has niacinamide in it, as well as a few different types of botanical extracts. This I have not opened yet. And this does say fragrance free. I do not speak German. So whenever I'm up in these stores, I am like using my Google Translate camera to try to figure out what any of these things say. But yeah, Mixa, I have a few of the other body lotions. So that was the Panthenol one, which is great for dehydrated skin, great for dry parched skin. I also have from them Urea Seeker Repair. And so this is 5% Urea and Panthenol. 5% of which one? I don't know, 5% of both, maybe. Again, so this has urea up higher on the ingredients list. So I think it is 5% urea. And in terms of Sika, something I found out, Sika is not Centella. And I think that's something like Korean skincare got us like very ingrained around. Sika just has to do with like healing. If I'm not mistaken, like it helps to heal and nourish the skin. So yeah, there's no Centella in this. This is a formula intended to help nourish body skin, heal maybe dry chapped skin. I love urea. And here, a lot of brands focus around urea, really highlight urea. I feel like in the US, I really only see Eucerin. Focus on that, which fun fact, Eucerin is a German company. Company. Also, this has ethanol in it, which is really interesting. In the middle of the ingredients list, but still it's in there. I wonder what that's solubilizing. This one's also from Mixa, the same brand as the Panthenol lotion. I also have from a different brand, uh, basically the same thing. So this is from a brand called Isana. This is their urea body lotion, 5% urea, basically same concept. So Isana is the in-house brand for the like drugstore chain here called Rossman, but urea is higher up on this ingredients list. It says 5%. It's the second ingredient on there. It also has Glycerin, this has a few oils in there, Panthenol in there as well. I haven't used either of these yet. They kind of seem like dupes. Neither one of them say fragrance free. Okay, so yeah, this one I've purchased before, the one from Mixa, and this has like, such a weird powdery baby smell to it. I do not enjoy. Therefore, I don't like using this all over my full body, but urea products I like using specifically on my feet. So worth noting just in that regard, I do not like the smell of that one though. And then the Asana one also has a weird smell to it. It's not baby, but I do not like that smell. This one also says, in German, something about microbiome, high microbiome. So maybe they're also promoting this is like helpful for the microbiome, I don't know. Then also from Isana, a body lotion, 5.5% urea, a lot of urea. I don't know why I bought two of these. My boyfriend also really likes these. We, especially here in the cold, we like to use the body lotions. I believe this one is fragrance free though. This one doesn't seem to have a smell, but yeah, here you can get specifically these ones if I'm not mistaken. So these are at the 5.5%. They also have 10%, the 10%, those are a lot richer. My boyfriend accidentally bought the 10% one and he was like, I cannot use this. I do not like this texture. So something else though is, again, we're staying on the urea chain. Urea here is really popular from Balea. Balea is the in-house brand of a store called DM. DM is basically like Walgreens here. They have a 5% urea shampoo, body wash, two-in-one situation. This I love. This, uh, it's like one euro 65 or something. I buy like four of these at a time and this lives in my shower and I use this from like head to toe. This is really nice. It just reminds me of a nice gentle body wash and it just has the extra advantage of the 5% urea. And aside from urea, it does have glycerin, it has panthenol, and it has allantoin in it. So it's interesting to see this in a body wash, but I love the texture of this. I'll even use this to wash my face from time to time. But again, to emphasize, urea here is everywhere. And I feel like in the US, at least while I was living there, I never noticed urea being that big of a skincare ingredient. But here, like, you can't throw a rock in a pharmacy without hitting something that says urea on it. And then the last of the body products I think I have in this bag from Balea, again, the DM brand. This is a peeling body lotion that has 5% 
Dolce. There's a line of these. This is the only one that seemed like really interesting to me because I think the other ones were like panthenol based or like hyaluronic acid based. And I was like, I'm good on that. But to call out ingredients, so this has glycolic acid in there. This also has lactic acid and mandelic acid up in there. Handful of different botanical extracts, which is interesting. Yeah, this is AHA complex in here that helps to resurface body skin, which can help with things like breakouts, pigmentation, texture and all that. I have not used this yet, but definitely interesting. And like when I saw it, I immediately was like, oh, I need to buy that. Let's do a little first impression together. Okay, so right off the bat, gel cream texture, feels really nice and hydrating on the skin. No smell. And I have a few different glycolic acid body products and glycolic acid, especially at certain percentages and products, has a very specific smell in emulsions. Body lotions are emulsions, like a mixture of oil and water-based compounds. This has no scent to it, no smell, which is actually really nice. 5% AHA though, and realize, like I mentioned earlier, there's a complex of AHAs in there. So probably a very low percentage of each of the AHAs that are actually on the ingredients list. And for reference, glycolic acid is the fourth ingredient. Glycerin's right before it. I feel like whenever I formulate with glycerin, I rarely see it above 5% in emulsions, unless you wanted to get like a lot more rich. So glycolic acid's right after glycerin, and most likely the glycerin's not above 5%. Do with that what you will. So let's talk about some of the other products I bought. These are all for face. One of the few things I saw here, and I feel like I've noticed this quite a bit, is so this is a cushion foundation, essentially, from a brand called Isana, the in-house brand for Rossman. This is their Hyaluron Skin Compact. It's the only thing I can understand on there. This seems to have SPF 15. One thing you see a lot here in Europe is a lot of like low SPF products. You're gonna see like SPF 10, 15, 20 products. And also the fact that a few different brands here have like these like cushion style foundations, which a lot of us assume is like a very Korean Japanese thing. And I actually bought two of them. So this is the box for number three, Dunkel. I have no idea what Dunkel means. I'm gonna assume that means dark, but I bought three Dunkel and number two, Mittel. Mittel I think is medium. Show you the colors. Well, first of all, so cushion, has a little puff, a little mirror up in there. And then let me, let's get a little, let's a little swatchy swatch going. Okay, so top one is Dunkel, bottom one is Mittel. They are very interesting. They're very interesting colors. Like this right here is a bronzer for me. They're very sheer coverage is the issue. So, I mean, I've played with these a little bit before swatching them on camera. They're very like sheer coverage. So I think the color is a little bit more forgiving. So the fact that this is dark, disappointing, because I don't think there's any shade darker. And there are definitely people with dark skin here in Germany. But yeah, it's interesting. I don't really understand the target consumer for this or the purpose if it's so sheer coverage, the SPF protection is very minimal. I don't know. Also with the marketing on this, it's supposed to be like a very hydrating product. So I feel like it's not necessarily the most oily skin friendly because it's probably very glowy on the face. I think these were like six or seven euro here though. So I figured they were worth trying out on me buying them. But so let's talk about some local German drugstore skincare brands. One of the most popular ones that I've seen here is a brand called No, N-O with a little slash through it. And so this I think is a standalone brand. It's not like an in-house brand or anything. They give me inky list vibes a lot. Realistically, I don't think their formulas are anything revolutionary necessarily. I have this from them, which is hydrating cream. Like it's definitely a richer cream balm texture to show you. Like it has a rich texture to it. And the focus of this is really like hydrating, nourishing, soothing the skin. This is like six euro. Doesn't really have much of a smell to it. From the same brand, I also have Hyperhydration 4D Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Very tiny bottle. This was also very cheap, but I hate Eight the dropper style on this. It's not like a traditional dropper and I feel like you can get a lot of product up in there. And then one product I actually forgot to bring with me. They have essentially a 2% BHA solution which is like jam packed full of a lot of like, the way I can word this is like oily skin, acne prone skin marketing buzzwords. So it's like, oh, this has succinic acid up in there and BHA and all these other things. If I'm gonna be objective, the product itself is nice. I don't find it irritates my skin in any way. The product's not nothing revolutionary. And I feel like a lot of the ingredients that they market are very buzzword and at the concentrations present in that product, you're not going to see a lot of benefit from it necessarily. Products are cute. They do have a sunscreen and I actually think the lady who works PD for the brand follows me on Instagram because I remember at one point she made a comment about the sunscreen for No that she developed and it does have Tinosorb M in it. I tried it once. I did not love it. I'm going to be honest with you, but I feel like with a lot of German brands, especially these drugstore brands, Caucasian Germans are their primary customer demographic, so they don't care about white casts. And I feel like that's been uh, that's something I've noticed with a lot of German sunscreens is they have white casts. From another brand called q and A. I have a couple products. This is one. Ooh, this has been living in my bathroom. I love this. This is a zinc PCA cream. I was very interested to see something that specifically advertised zinc PCA front center. This is also, this gives me inky list vibes. Very similar to No. I feel like they market their products with specific like buzzword names and what the benefits you're going to get from these are. q and A. it's specific ingredients that they call out. And so zinc PCA is a great ingredient for acne prone skin. I 
love to see that. So I was super interested when I saw this. This cream is really nice. It is a cream though. So it's like a richer texture moisturizer. It spreads really nice, sets really nice on the skin. This is at night only when I use this. Zinc PC is an ingredient I really like to see specifically in products for acne prone skin, like oily acne prone skin. So I was really hyped to see it really front and center on a product. Realistically, it also has niacinamide, other humectants and emollients in there. So I find this is a little bit of a richer texture. I will only use this at night, like I mentioned, but I really like this. It's really affordable in my mind. So definitely caught my eye. The same brand, Q&A, also has an azelaic acid serum. They don't designate any specific percentage in there, but aside from that, it has aloe, it has the PCA again, a few different seed extracts. Yeah, so probably not a high, high, high percentage. Probably this is similar to like the Naturium azelaic acid topical acid. Yeah, I was really interested in seeing this just because I don't see azelaic acid front and center in general, let alone here in Germany. I feel like it's not like a huge ingredient they focus on. So yeah, this Q&A brand, instantly when I saw some of those ingredient highlights, I was like, oh, this is an interesting brand. I've only used the Zinc PCA moisturizer. From the Isana brand from Rossman, this is a 120 hour liquid moisturizer. This is a 5% panthenol complex. It also features niacinamide and ectoin. Ectoin is a really hot ingredient right now. I feel like I'm seeing it pop up a lot more. Great ingredients for hydration. And then also 6% glycerin up in here. This is fragrance free. This 120 hour concept I've seen before. The No brand has something very, very similar, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And realistically, this is just... This is just like a liquidy serum, like a tone. This gives me toner vibes. This is a toner. Why they call it a moisturizer, I'm not entirely sure. I don't believe there's any occlusives or really any emollients in here. This does have niacinamide. It has panthenol, betaine, sorbitol, ectoin, allantoin, niacinamide, a couple botanical extracts, sodium hyaluronate. Yeah, realistically, this has primarily humectants, no real emollients or occlusives in there. So I don't know why it's called a moisturizer. This is really just giving me like rich hydrating toner, but it's really nice. I've used this a few times. I think it really is hydrating hydrating and the packaging this is 100 mil for like really really cheap so this really is really nice to use on like wider surface areas in my mind so this was a really really nice find do love this and the last product i have this is just straight up petrolatum aka vaseline i just thought it was very very interesting that instead of calling it petroleum jelly petrolatum they straight up just call this vaseline in my mind vaseline is the trade name that we see the product specifically of and the the product inside that vaseline is calling is petroleum jelly but yeah and then on the ingredients list it's literally just petrolatum and then the antioxidant that helps preserve it. But yeah, I thought that was really interesting. This little tube here was like three or four euro though, very cheap. I like this. I use this on my lips primarily, but I just thought that was interesting. That was my German drugstore haul. Realistically, it's not a lot, but it was just some things that were really interesting about the body care. That, that was my main call out here is the attention and the marketing around body care here is very interesting. And then some of the drugstore in-house brands and how they talk about skincare, skincare benefits and ingredients were also very interesting. Just comparing those to what I'm used to in the US and how how we market skin care for specific concerns or whatever. But let me know down below in the comment section, have you used any of these products? What your thoughts on them are? What else would you like to see me talk about or show you from German drugstores or cosmetic stores in general? And if you're familiar with brands, what specific product from these brands or these drugstores do you recommend me trying? Let me know down below in the comment section. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching guys. Bye.